Hello, everyone. As you can tell from the title, you're still wrong about SCP-096. Let's get started as to why. So, in my last video, I did a short explanation of why SCP-096 is not quite as deadly as we might expect, and one of the topics I've always wanted to cover with 096 is what would happen if you were in space or on the moon or on Mars. If you were not on Earth when you looked at its picture, what would happen exactly? And I mentioned in the description of that video that I would be doing another video soon called You're Still Wrong About SCP-096, and this is that video. And I'm definitely going to cover the space thing in the second half of the video, but the first half here should probably be spent covering a couple of, let's say, frequent comments that people made as some sort of argument against what I uh, said would happen in the previous video. First, the two seconds is too long or too short category. The idea that SCP-096 would either take longer or a shorter amount of time to kill people. The thing is, from the article, you can't really get very good information as to what the actual speed of SCP-096 is at any given time. Uh, we know that it takes time for sure for him to go from location to location because there are, are test logs written by the original author, or at least linked in the original article, that cover his travel from one place to the next. And it does not happen instantaneously. If you want to say it would take longer than two seconds, you can. That was a given in the previous video. But if you want to say it takes shorter, I think you're probably wrong. Now, this is related to another type of comment that actually says, well, what if it's proximity-based and not completely and totally random? Well, we picked our scenario of everyone in the world gets sent an image of SCP-096 to try and increase the chances that it would be essentially a random sampling, although that wouldn't be truly random. It would be close to random. Because you could never know when someone would be looking down at their phone to, you know, in some cultures are different than other cultures. So yes, there would be, when I say that, I mean, like, the frequency in which people are willing to check their phones differs from culture to culture, you know? So in one culture, you check your phone as soon as you get the message. In another culture, you might wait until the person you're talking to is finished with their conversation before you look at the message. So there's going to be some variance as to when you look at the image of SCP-096. Uh... But overall, across, you know, six billion people that would actually see it, you would generally assume that there would be something of a close to random sampling. But there was one scenario that people brought up that uh, is a bit of an issue. What if after he kills someone, he goes after the nearest person to him who has seen his picture at that time? So if he goes to kill someone in Times Square, New York City, he would then go after everyone in New York before he went anywhere else in the world to kill anyone else. Wouldn't that shorten the time? No, no, that was baked. That kind of idea was baked into the two second average anyway. See, the thing is, when he kills people, he, he doesn't instantaneously run through them. He stops and kills them, and then he starts again to run to the next person. That is the essence of the two second average, which is still far, far too low. But even with the numbers we ran last time, we realized that it would take like 400 years for him to kill everybody in the world. And by then, more people would be born who had never seen his face. There was a third issue that people brought up in relation to this. For example, if he goes into Times Square to kill someone, wouldn't a bunch of people see him? I actually saw genuine comments of people going, well, if people see him on his way to kill someone else, wouldn't they also be infected by it, even if they weren't infected before? And I'm like... If they see his face, that's, a <laughs> there's a lot of people that were leaving comments like, oh, well, if you see him running by, you're dead too. I'm like, why would that be? Because you saw his back? If you And then and people are like, well, maybe, you know, just see him out of your periphery is good enough. No, it's definitely not. And the SCP uh, itself and the actual added article, that little tacked on thing at the end where you can click through and see the um, thing about the photograph that was planted originally. But the, the photograph was planted on someone's refrigerator. The three pixels existed. So that guy probably looked at his refrigerator and that picture at least uh, several dozen times before he finally looked. So what are those three little pixels in the corner there? So it was in his peripheral the entire time. He just didn't trigger it until he looked directly at it, and one would assume one of those three pixels was essentially his face. He was looking at the camera in that picture. So, yeah, that's a whole... And Plus, the picture had to be taken, right? Like, someone was looking through the camera. Someone looked at the picture. 
<laughs> like the idea that no one looked at that picture. No, no one looked at his refrigerator the entire time. It has to be a direct look at his face in order to trigger it. That's a given. That's in the article or in the supplementary details that go along with the article. So let's not worry about that so much. But I will say, if he does go after the nearest person to him, then, yeah, there would be problems on a more localized scale, but then again, life would still adapt to it. Like I talked about before, like, yeah, there would be, like, shelters you would go into and try and wait out the SCP-096 tornado that's going through, (laughs) you know? People would probably live in, you know, spread out. They would live in more rural areas. Most of the Earth is empty, by the way. Like, even the land mass of Earth. Most of Earth is not covered with structures and people. So, if you live in New York City and he starts killing people, it's still going to take him, like, uh, three or four months to kill everybody in New York. That's It's still going to take him a while. So, if you're one of the people who doesn't want to die, you would leave New York <laughs> And go halfway across the world. Just go as far away from it as possible. (laughs) There would be some refugee problems, I would imagine, starting basically on the exact opposite end of the world of wherever (laughs) wherever he's killing people. But still, like, that's the point. If he only goes after the nearest person, if he, like, selects a new target after killing someone and goes after the nearest person, then you just move. (laughs) Go somewhere else. Yes, there would be huge socioeconomic upheaval when people leave their cities or leave their regions, but it wouldn't it wouldn't actually like prevent it wouldn't like kill the extra people. The people would just adapt to it anyway. And by the way, once it's done killing people in New York City, for example, wouldn't people just move back in from other parts of the world? <laughs> or maybe just people who have never seen it? Like they would just move in and take over. <laughs> Also, this kind of a system would be very easily exploitable to try and get him away from populated areas, right? Just clear everyone out, and if you don't manage, if people are like, I'm not leaving, well, you're dead. Okay, fine. But clear everyone out, get people who you can confirm have seen him, or, you know, just make new people in case that you're not sure. And, uh, yeah, just start drawing him slowly, one person, one death at a time, away from the populated uh, center. Like, just move people out, and then move them back in when you're done. It's easy, simple. And by easy and simple, I mean incredibly complex and draining on national resources, but it's not impossible. Anyway. Oh, and the idea that he would destroy buildings, like, say, for example, you're on the 64th floor of a skyscraper, and he's just gonna destroy the building rather than try and get to or try to take a straight line just take the stairs god damn it (laughs) he's gonna take the path of least resistance (laughs) come on anyway speaking of the path of least resistance uh we want to talk a little bit about what would happen if you looked at the picture of scp-096 on the moon or in space anywhere not on earth we have to actually assume certain things about SCP-096 in order for this to work, and none of it is confirmed in the article itself. So, can SCP-096 self-propel itself? Well, he definitely took down an airplane, right? He definitely managed to take down an airplane, but he could have done that by leaping to it. Now, leaping to it would have required some stunningly good calculations as to his trajectory, but he could do it. And then also... (laughs) This is the interesting thing about SCP-096. The idea that he could take down an airplane indicates that he's probably pretty good at math, (laughs) in a way. (laughs) Which is going to be important when he tries to go to space, because he's going to have to become very, very good at orbital trajectories. He's going to have to be able to predict the direction something is going, and where it's going to be afterwards. But then I started thinking about how it really wouldn't be about the math, because uh, if you jump to go after, say, the Apollo, let's just say Apollo 11. Apollo 11 is heading towards the moon. Let's say a person on board Apollo 11 is looking at a picture of SCP-096 while he's traveling, and SCP-096 breaks out of containment and jumps towards that location. And not just that location, but he jumps towards where uh, that capsule is going to be so that he can kill the person. And he lands directly on it, say, before they get to the moon, after they get to the moon, it doesn't really matter. He lands on it, and he destroys the capsule, and everyone inside dies. Here's the interesting thing about that, though. That capsule has maneuvering thrusters. It has the ability to change its trajectory. So not only is SCP-096, in order to kill this person, going to have to be able to uh, (laughs) deliberately, like, 
know where it is. He's going to have to know where it is, even if they decide to change their trajectory after he's taken off. Which, by the way, uh, him taking off would probably just be him doing a handstand and launching himself into the air. I thought about how the ability of him to run around the Earth in the direction of the Earth's rotation and then, like, leap off... But the easiest and simplest way for him to do it, the path of least resistance, would just to be to take a handstand and launch himself into the air. And why a handstand is because his arms are longer than his legs, which means there's more space for him to accelerate. Uh, I had some people run the math for this, and essentially he would level a city block. That's how much force would be impacted into the ground uh, when he takes off, but he could do it. Assuming an infinite amount of strength and an infinite amount of uh, ability to go wherever he wants to go. But then I thought about if he can self-project himself into directions without having to touch the ground, why does he bother to touch the ground? That seems like a very strong cognitive leap to make. So he touches the ground and runs to places as long as it's on the earth. But if something is in space, he's just going to be able to naturally change his trajectory in space. Like he leaps towards a thing and then it, it, it decides to move this way. So he le- so he what? Changes directions midway? What's he pushing off of? Nothing. So if you're on the moon, you're probably dead. If you're on any kind of like place that can land and actually catch the ground and run towards you, then you're probably dead. But if you're in space and you just tweak your trajectory a little bit, he's going to land among the stars, not on you. <laughs> Which actually gives you the easiest way to keep him contained without killing him. And by the way, I, there was a, a couple of comments I remember seeing about killing SCP-096. Like, J- let's just kill him. Nothing says, yeah, his bones are indestructible and he regenerates. SCP Illustrated and I worked together on a story about how SCP-096 was killed by breaking his neck through SCP-173 and then filling his uh, his bones with an acid that burned him from the inside out. But as written, this, this is the thing, rules as written are rules as intended. As written, SCP-096 is, its skeleton is indestructible, period. It cannot be destroyed. You can destroy all of the soft tissue around it, but you cannot destroy its skeleton, and if you destroy the soft tissue around it, it does not incapacitate it permanently. It just regenerates and then continues. So the best way to actually neutralize it as an as a threat, or even if not neutralize it as a threat, just turn it into a kind of threat that's uh, super, super long term, is to have it launch itself into space after someone and then change trajectory. That's it. You're done. Even if it manages to pick some sort of a parabolic arc that brings it back to Earth, it's not going to matter because the the uh, time it's going to take it will give you time to prepare a new space person. You know, just get a person in, and plus, if he's, if he's proximity based, just keep chaining out space people. Make him take make him take off so hard that he has to exit the solar system from wherever he is. Get him to land on the moon first, then get him to exit the solar system. Simple, easy. It could take him hundreds of years to return, even if he deliberately selects a velocity and arc that brings him back to earth it's still going to take forever for him to get out there and forever for him to get back so it's a very easy and simple process for the scp foundation if they really wanted to keep him contained on a long-term basis if you like the video please scroll down and hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you'll be notified when i upload new videos and if you want to help support this content and make sure that more of it keeps getting made head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian like everybody here on the screen already has and pledge at any level. If you pledge $5 or more, you can see your names in the credits. If you pledge $10, you can get a critique from me on your SCP article. And if you pledge anything more than that, well, I will help you co-author an article. Two different people have successfully gotten articles on the site now that wouldn't have otherwise. So that's a useful Patreon tier. But yeah, head on over to Patreon and keep letting me know that I'm not alone out here. I'll see you all again on Thursday. Oh, you, Thomas. Hit the subscribe button, friend. And, uh, you know, go to Patreon if you feel like it. I don't want to pressure you or nothing, but I would really appreciate it.